Okay. Yeah, you started back in New Zealand in the 1980s. I, I saw um, the Marxists take over our government and start dictating foreign policy in New Zealand. And uh, really how I started to understand communism was at the time I, I spent a lot of time interviewing a guy who had infiltrated our New Zealand Communist Party for our security services. And he actually in 1983 trained in Moscow at the big Lenin's Institute for Higher Learning there. And what he told me was this, he said the big secret of communism is the ability of tiny communist parties to dictate terms and policies to the mainstream political parties of the country. And they do this very simply. They, uh, they take control of the labor unions and the labor unions control the American Democratic Party. They control the Canadian Liberal Party. They control the British Labor Party. They control the German Social Democratic Party. And so the communists, by taking control of the unions, take control of the mainstream parties and can dictate who gets elected and what policies they pursue. So when Obama was in power, uh, and when Biden is in power, the communists run America. The communists are dictating the policy. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, activism of the SEIU, for instance? Yeah, the SEIU is one of the main transmission belts of com communism. The Service Employees International Union, SEIU, well over two million members, the largest private sector union in the country. Well, Obama talked about when he was doing immigration policy, he would consult with Alisao Medina, who was one of the top guys in the SEIU. Um, Medina was a card-carrying Marxist and basically dictated Obama's immigration policies, you know, his open border policies. Um, he would talk to Andy Stern of SEIU, who would, uh, who would basically dictate policy. So, yeah, the unions are the transmission belt of communism. So where are we today? We've seen uh, the BLM marches and uh, 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 looting, riots, disruptions. How close are, we, are the Democrats following the uh, rules for radicals? Well, it's, Len it's, it's Alinsky, it's Gramsci, it's Lenin, it's all the Marxist thinkers. And we are, we are 80, we're 80 percent through a communist revolution now. We are, we've got 20 percent to go, they're consolidating power right now, they're getting ready to crack down on their enemies, they want to create certain crises. So really the next election, if we get to that, and I'm not sure we will, um, we're, we're, we're in a point now where we're right on the edge of going over the edge. We're right, we're hanging on, well we, no we've gone over the edge, we are hanging on to a daisy over the cliff, like the old cartoons, you know. We're hanging on to a daisy. We're trying to claw ourselves back up to, the, up to the ledge to give ourselves a fighting chance. So we're as close to going under as we can, but at the same time, a lot of people around the country are waking up and wising up, and all sorts of new organisations are starting up everywhere, from Moms for Liberty to, to church groups. A lot of new fired up people are joining the GOP all over the country. So there's a real pushback. So it's a race against time, you know, who, which side's going to come out on top? Uh, what about this era of censorship and uh, 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 ostracizing uh, those accused of misinformation, disinformation? Yeah, well, this is, this is typical communist playbook. You know, whenever a communist government takes over, they start talking about the the uh, rebel elements, the disruptive elements, the disunifiers, the, the splitters, and these people for the good of society must be, must be, excuse me, must be clamped down on and suppressed. So that's what they're doing now with their disinformation campaigns, their big tech censorship. All of that is designed to cut down the free speech of their opposition, conservatives and patriots. So yeah, that's what I say, we're 80% through this revolution. They've started the crackdown, they've started the shutdowns, they've started the censorships, but it's gonna go on long, it's gonna go on unless we stop it to where to our voice is completely nullified. You know, this is this isn't just because of the COVID or whatever, it's not gonna come back to normal. We're in a revolution that's going on towards communism 
and unless we push it back, it will soon consume the whole country. Mm -hmm. Well, the Democrats are able to get to rally troops to the streets, but uh, even the January 6 uh, political prisoners have not had a significant uh, uh, a groundswell of protests out even after two, even beyond two years that they've been locked up. Yeah, and it's not the answer either. You know, getting getting conservatives out in the streets is not the answer. That will just create create the opportunity for the Democrats to do more false flag operations. People were led into a trap on January the sixth. They had it all gamed out. They were going to bring people in. They were going to let them into the White House. Uh, let them into the Capitol building, they're going to have provocateurs, provoc provocateurs starting violence and it'll all be clamped down on. So that's not the answer. Incidentally, I was just in New Zealand and they had a big protest march on Parliament and they occupied Parliament grounds. And for two or three weeks it went fine, it was completely peaceful. Then strange people showed up who started doing violent things and the cops came in and shut everything down just like January the 6th, very, very similar operation. So, you know, it's the old provocateur trick. You put some provocateurs into a peaceful engagement, you get it fired up, and then the cops come in. So we don't want mass protests. I think it was a big mistake for Trump to call it for protests when he was arrested. People saw through that, that was a trap. People would be led into all sorts of violence. So we cannot give our opposition any chance, any opportunity by, by violent rhetoric or violent actions to cl clamp down on the whole movement. This has to be on the ground organising for elections, getting people into school board positions, county commissions, um, state, state legislatures, all the way up. We've got to work full full time in the electoral arena right up to the 2024 elections. How much confidence do you have in the electoral systems themselves? Not, not a great deal, but in some states certain things have been done to, to make things better. A lot of the red states have enacted, um, you know, to clamp down on, on uh, various vote fraud operations. That's been done in Florida to some degree, which is why I think we got a red wave in Florida in the last elections and nowhere else. But, um, you know, certain states are continuing to do that. I think we've got to rally our base. I think we can still win this, um, no matter how much they try and cheat, because I think the, the groundswell is so large. But, yeah, everything we can do at a local level to get rid of voting machines, improve election integrity up until elections has got to be, got to be a number one priority. So number one, number one priority is organised for elections. Number two pr priority is to do everything we can to make sure they're clean. How much influence is there, uh, is, does the uh, Communist Chinese Party have in uh, Western governments? China runs the West. China runs the United States. China runs Canada. China runs New Zealand. China runs, uh, a large degree, Britain. I think the reason the reason that um, Boris Johnson is no longer the Prime Minister of Britain is because of China. So yeah, China runs most of the Western countries be, be, by co-opting the elites of those countries. Um, on the left they co-op the unions, they co-op the left-wing politicians through ideology. On the right they co-op them and blackmail them and coerce them through money. So yeah, that China, right now in this country I believe the ruling powers are Barack Obama and Susan Rice and Valerie Jarrett and Xi Jinping. That's who rules. That's who rules. Uh, who, who would you put at the head of that hierarchy? Uh, Xi Jinping. Un unquestionably. Is it a, a Marxist or a globalist revol driven revolution, you feel? There is no great difference. You know, Marx, you know this is a mistake a thing a lot of people make. They look at someone like Klaus Schwab and say, he's a globalist, he's different from the communists. No, he's not. He's, he's a tool of the communists. He's a bust of Lenin in his office. You know, there was a, um, a big World Youth Development Forum in Beijing in July last year. It was, it was all about Agenda 2030, you know, the globalist Agenda 2030. It was organized by the youth wing of the Chinese Communist Party. 
and all of the guests from all over the world were young Communist League members from Britain, from France, from Germany, from South Africa. And uh, the organizing committee was included Xi Jinping, the leader of China, and uh, Vladimir Putin, the leader of Russia, and the keynote speaker was Klaus Schwab. They're all globalism and communism are the same movement. Your documentaries and uh, uh, ongoing commentary, where can people follow you? Go to Trevor, trevorloudon.com. Trevorloudon.com. I've got uh, Enemies Within the Church, of a, a DVD there, which is, is mind blowing. Uh, I've got my two recent books, White House uh, Security Risk Senators, Parts 1 and Part 2. I profile the communist backgrounds of 30 currently serving U.S. Senators. And my new series of books, six books, which the first one's coming out on May 1st, is uh, called House Un-Americans. And I profile state by state 100 members of the U.S. Congress who have deep communist Chinese, Cuban, globalist connections. So I say none of these people could pass a background check to drive a school bus. But there are no background checks in Congress. There's no security clearances. There's no nothing. And so most of our Congress, a large proportion of our Congress and a large proportion of our Senate are working for the other team. So it's trevorloudon.com. The mayor, the newly elected, or recently elected mayor of uh, Los Angeles, Karen Bass, yeah. in, her, in her younger days, if she disavows her uh, uh, communist training in, in Cuba, is that something that one can shake just by a, through a, a dis... Look, her c communist connections are ongoing right till now. She's been to Cuba more than 17 times. She was actually accused by a, a former Los Angeles police chief of smuggling weapons from Cuba to revolutionaries in Los Angeles. The woman is a complete communist. She has always been a communist, and she's a communist today. She has communists around her, communists. She has been dealing with communists right up to the last few weeks. There's nothing in any way non-communist about that woman. Uh -huh. What sort of agenda do you think she would have for this city and uh, Gavin Newsom for the state? Well, I think Gavin Newsom is basically administering California for the Chinese. You know, there's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, you know, California pension money is invested in China. Um, Judy Chu, who's been close to Bass in the past, past basically runs the Chinese community here uh, for, for the communist Chinese. Gavin Newsom uh, is part of that, that uh, Northern California elite. They've been deeply co-opted by China, and I think Karen Bass will move in the same direction. She's going to appear a little bit more moderate, so she probably cracked down on the homeless a little bit. She wants to appear a bit more moderate on the home front, but on the foreign policy front and the business front, she'll be pushing China, 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 China. Uh, what do you think uh, Gavin Newsom's uh, agenda for the Democratic nomination would bring uh, the rest of the 49 states? Well, Gavin Newsom to me is, is, China, you know, is administering California for the Chinese. Joe Biden is currently administering the United States. Well, the people around Joe Biden, because Joe can't tie his shoelaces. But, so Gavin Newsom would just put that on steroids. The, Gavin Newsom would basically bring America even more under the control of China. Whether we'll get that far or not, you know, there's, there's two things. So the Chinese are subverting everything they can and getting ready for a, a kinetic war to destroy us. So how far do they push it? Do they, do they I, I believe they'll get into kinetic war pretty soon because they don't want to risk a President Trump or a President DeSantis coming into the White House. They want to strike while America is weak. And so I don't know if Gavin Newsom was even going to get his chance. Do you think that they would strike ahead of the war? You mentioned before, if we even get to a 2024 election, yeah. you think? I, I'd be very surprised if we're not in a kinetic war with China by the end of this year. A military hostility? Oh, absolutely. In the homeland of US? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They will attack America with nukes. They have 
thousands of um, saboteurs already here. We're seeing big spikes coming across the southern border of military age Chinese males, but they've been there for a long time. But then there's Hezbollah here, there's Russian Spetsnaz here, there's Cubans here, there's Venezuelans here. Cartel, Chinese Mexican. Cartel, and the cartel have been working with Hezbollah and the Chinese for a very long time. So all of these things, they're preparing America for the final takedown. And if I was Xi Jinping, I wouldn't be wanting President Trump to come back for a second term. I would want to be making my big push before that happens. It may not happen that way, but I think logically that's what we should be expecting. As an historian yourself, Americans seem to, when, uh, when President Trump was in office, they said, well, uh, we don't want any wars. And now, uh, even more so, it's in the Ukraine, but we don't want any wars here. Uh, do Americans have to stand up at, at this point and, uh, and accept the need or the, the, the responsibility to defend their liberty? Yeah, look, well, what's this? We don't want any wars. We don't get to decide that. Our enemies get to decide that. You didn't say in World War II, we don't want a war with Japan. We don't want a war with Italy. We don't want a war with Germany. Japan decided that for us. Right. You know, they, they, they started the bombing. So, so these countries are intending to attack us. We either recognize that and take precautions and hopefully deter it, or we pretend it's not happening and we uh, get attacked and we lose. That's our options right now. When, what's your uh, projection of, of what things could be like if we were to lose militarily uh, in a war across the Pacific? This country would be annihilated. Uh, most of the people here would be killed, a few would be enslaved, and the Chinese... Uh, the, plan, the plan is Russia takes Canada, um, Mexico gets the southwest, Texas, um, New Mexico, etc. China occupies everything else. The, the, the Chinese don't want to outcompete us. They want to destroy us and occupy this great fertile land with their people because they don't have a lot of great fertile land for their people where they are. They need the living space. And so their goal is to destroy the current population and settle this country with their people. To destroy the United States of America, not just put a puppet government in place. No, destroy it. Just kill most of the people here. You know, that's not a puppet government. No, they want to destroy the place. They, want, they, they believe in great Han supremacy. They believe the Han Chinese are the master race. And the master race's role, like the Nazis did with the Germans, is, to just, is basically to wipe out their competition and, and change the whole demographics of the world. And America is the country that must be wiped out. This is revealed over 20 years ago in unrestricted warfare written smuggled out of China by written by two Chinese colonels. They, their goal was to eliminate the population of the United States and settle this country with their people. So basically in the end of it Russia would get the northern hemisphere in Europe, China gets America, South America, Africa and the Pacific. Russia would get Europe? Yeah absolutely. Would they use those uh uh, nuclear bombs that leave the building standing but kill all the uh, life? Well, they probably would, yes. Uh, the, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah, yeah, that uh, just do a lot of dirty radiation. Yeah. You know, back in the 80s, this is how callous they are. Back in the 80s, the Russians had plans to attack Europe in 1983. They called it off at the last moment. But their plan was to nuke West Germany and send their troops through the hot nuclear zones to conquer, you know, to get to France, to get to Holland or whatever. And con they knew that those troops would die of radiation poisoning, but it would take a few weeks. And basically by that time they would have secured all of Europe. So yeah, absolutely, you know, this is a, this is a joint operation between Russia, China, Iran, Cuba, Venezuela, and, and other countries to basically decisively take down the West. And that includes elim eliminating the population of this country. Uh -huh. What would happen to uh, Barack Obama in that case? Would, would he also perish? Oh, I think so. I think Barack Obama and Mark Zuckerberg and, and uh, all of these elite Bill Gates would be lined up and shot like everybody else. They might think they're going to be part of the ruling elite. They might think they control this tiger that they're riding. 
but I think they would just be eliminated. Like, every, well, uh, they're traitors to this country. Why would anybody else trust them? Oh, uh, where if you had the option to go somewhere that you might survive, or is it already a fait accompli that you've uh, you've blown the whistle? Well, look. <laughs> I come from New Zealand, which was regarded as the safest country in the world. Yeah. But I'm here because I know that if New America goes down, there's nowhere to run. You know, still, yeah, I would say New Zealand is still the safest country. And being down there might give you an extra couple of weeks or something. But, you know, there's nowhere in the long term to run. If America goes down, the whole rest of the world will fall. There's nowhere to... There's no one that is going to resist Russia and China if America is out of the picture. What about the uh, Israel's Samson option? Will they even get a chance to do that to protect themselves? Well, I, I think they would, but they, they, they can protect themselves in the Middle East, but the, they can defend their own patch for a certain period of time, but they are working in partnership with America. If America's gone, Israel's days will be numbered as well. Do you think America's, this administration is uh, a, a true ally to Israel? No, it's uh, sabotaging Israel every way it can. Yeah. They've seen what they're doing to Bibi Netanyahu now, trying to turf him out of office. Yeah. Um, the Biden administration, as did the Barack Obama administration, absolutely hates Israel. Yeah. They want to make Iran the dominant power in the Middle East, Iran and Russia effectively. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they'll do everything they can to sabotage Israel. But the Israel, Bibi can't come out and say, Biden, you're a traitor. You're a, he's got to be make nice to the Americans because there's, there's military aid that flows. There's, there's other aid that flows. And he doesn't want to give Biden the excuse to cut off what is coming through. But right now, Bibi's fighting for a survival because Joe Biden is funding, funding massive protests against him. A revolution, essentially? Yeah, it's a, it's a revolution, yeah. The Israeli left, working with the U.S. State Department, is trying to destroy Bibi Netanyahu, because Netanyahu is trying to rein in the left-wing Supreme Court, which has control over the government and even control over military decisions. But Bibi Netanyahu knows he's got to fight for the survival. The Supreme Court stopping him doing that. He's got to take... He's got to uh, reduce the power of the Supreme Court so that Israel has a fighting chance. But by the Biden administration is trying to stop him doing that.